do something a little bit different today I'm going to be doing like a draw with me and I'll walk you guys through my art process as you some of you may know this channel is definitely going through some construction and I am just trying out different things that I enjoy doing and seeing which one I would like to keep up with so today we're doing a draw with me sketch with me color with me whatever my just usual art process to get me out of my art block so I hope you enjoyed today's video so I am filming on my phone right now and before I get started I always put on my Spotify playlist um, I have a special playlist for when I'm about to like draw sketch color whatever I'm doing so we're gonna do that and the playlist we are going for today is my create mode I don't care what you like <laughs> And the sketchbook that I'll be using is this bad boy right here. It's a Kenson Black Journal. Um, I got it from Barnes & Noble. So without further ado, let's get started. Also, I will be using my iPad 6th Gen, Apple Pencil 1st Gen. So we are switching to my Procreate account and I'll be filming both here and there. So yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna switch over to Procreate and get started with a sketch. So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm rendering this old art of mine, I guess. So, so the first thing we want to do is make sure we are on the first layer in procreate or any software you're using and i'm going to insert the sketch i already did on my sketchbook which i copied and sent to my ipad and i'm going to insert that image of the sketch into this layer and to do that you want to hit the toolbar go to add and insert image and then you can drop any image you would like if you want to use it as reference or if you're just going to recopy a sketch you've already done so because this is not a tutorial i am not going to go in depth on every single thing i do instead i'm gonna have a conversation with you all of course relating to art so in the original recording which i am now having to voice over due to music and playing in the background copyright reasons um, we were having a conversation about digital art versus traditional art and how a lot of people, whether inside or outside the art community, how they perceive digital art, um, validity, validity of digital art in the art realm or the art community. If you ask me, I believe that digital art is art. I believe that all forms of art are art. Um, regardless of the tools, mediums, um, scale level, or just whatever an artist decides to do, I believe that whatever is created is art. And I find myself often confused whenever these comments or conversations are brought up within the art community or brought up towards um, certain artists who use different mediums or different forms um, to create their art pieces. Of course, digital art is art. <laughs> like, how could it not be? Just like any other form of art, digital art requires skills, processes, and application of art theories, whether it be color theory or perspective or stylization and all these other aspects that come into play whenever we are creating art, whether it's landscape, portraits, or character creation. I believe that digital art is like the hardest form of art there is out there. Or maybe it's just me because I struggled a lot when it came to digital art because my mind just couldn't wrap around 
the actual implementation of creating digital art like i understand that you make your laptop tablet or ipad or even your mobile phone i understand these concepts but just you know having to actually create it i just i found it annoying i did not like it no part of me wanted to participate in creating digital art I guess for me, that feeling came from seeing people create their art or their digital art on their computers using like their mouse and clickers and stuff like that. And I was just like, how do you do this? And maybe it's just because I love traditional working traditionally, you know, having like pencil to paper or like a pen to actually physically have that control. And I felt like using like your laptop or like a mouse you weren't you didn't have that much control or I just didn't like the feeling of not having that I need to have control over like my strokes and I felt like you couldn't really replicate that feeling that you know traditional feeling of having like that pencil or that pen to create your art digitally and for the longest it's for the longest time, that, that's exactly what threw me off pursuing digital art. And I didn't like the idea of having to use my laptop to create art. I just found it super, super difficult. So yeah, it just really threw me off. And I'm saying all this to say that it takes a lot of work and skills to create a masterpiece, to create something digitally. And if you're somebody who's used to working traditionally, you have to give up that element of control to a certain extent, especially if you're working with a laptop, using your mouse and stuff to create your art digitally. And I'm even reminded of when I first purchased my Procreate, the Procreate app, and how much I struggled with it. Granted, I struggled for a day and a half and I finally got the grasp grasp of it but you also have to learn and master the program you're using whether you're using photoshop procreate clip studio art or something i think that's what it's called you know whatever program you're using you also have to learn and master it and on top of having to understand or know the concepts or the theories and elements of creating art and it's just mind-boggling to me so yeah digital art is very difficult to do and I believe that digital artists aren't given their flowers enough because it's really time-consuming I find that I spend much more time on my art pieces digitally than when I'm working with you know my pencil to paper and like my markers because that's like my main medium um, when I'm working traditionally because even today now that I somewhat have a grasp of the program I'm using and a better grasp of you know different theories and application of those theories when creating my art pieces I'm still blown away at the beautiful artworks I see in the art community whether on Instagram or um, people's portfolios or even on Pinterest and art toll. I'm just really blown away and very impressed at the level of skill and tenacity that these different artists have and this is not to say that you know one is better than the other because all forms of art and all forms of using different mediums to create your art pieces is difficult and requires a lot of skills talent you know dedication tenacity um, to create them and honestly big props to all artists using different forms of mediums to create their art pieces but in respect to the conversation we are having about um, digital artists and how the world and some artists in the art community view them I believe that they deserve a lot more credit than they are getting. Um, digital art is very much art. How can it not be art, you know? Art isn't just working with hands on with whatever traditional material. That's not all that art is. And art, just like any 
other part of our culture changes through time and space and the context of materials and resources available to artists within those time periods. So in the digital era, in the digital realm that we're in currently, of course, it's okay more than okay for artists to turn to technology to create art pieces and to create mediums using these new technology and new innovations it's a natural thing to occur and is a marker of our abilities as humans and as artists to be resourceful um, to the environment we're in and to the world we live in. And even in speaking of resources, art is expensive. Making art is very, very expensive. And I don't think people really understand or grasp how expensive these materials are for artists to have to create um, their pieces, especially traditionally to pay for your sketchbooks, like your canvases, your paints, your tools, like your markers, crayons, whatever. These equipments, these tools, these mediums are very, very, very expensive. It's entirely an investment. So when we see people using technology it's also a way to save money you know because you can mimic different mediums using different um, brushes that are available in the program you purchase or you create you can create your own um, brushes that can mimic um, mediums that we would use traditionally you can save a lot more money on paint and colors because you have every single color available to you in your device, your te technological devices, than to have to always go to like your art shop and purchase like $25 for one color or $45 for one single marker color. It's, it's you know, it saves you time and it's cost effective. I also feel like in the discourse of talking about digital art and whether it's valid or not, I feel like part of that conversation implicates shame. Shame over somebody not being able to, you know, finance themselves and purchasing traditional tools and medium shame over their skill level because some people think that if you can work traditionally then your art should look a certain type of way and it's very much classist and it does tie into classism and classism especially in the art realm because if we truly want to have an honest, productive conversation about the questioning and validity of different forms of mediums in art, in, within the art community, we also have to talk about the classes elements that come into play with this. Because a lot of people hold this perception that artists who can afford to use certain types of mediums or certain technology or whatever to create their art pieces are in some sort of hold some sort of position in the totem pole or the hierarchy within whether within the art community or outside of our art com outside of the art community in our society and we also see this in in the attention and spaces certain kinds of artists receive within the art community and within our society versus others. And even to bring in the aspect and element of race and cultural identity when it comes to creating art and having space in the art community to also shine, we see this element and aspect of both attention, support, and you know, space to show your artwork um, and feel and display some sort of representation in the art realm also come into play in these aspects.
Oh, and also talking about validity of art pieces and the questioning of certain mediums and whatnot, we also see this prevalence in how different types of artists are viewed and judged. For example, if you go on TikTok, if you're on art TikTok, a lot of the conversation that I see on my timeline are about how black art students feel that they are much more ridiculed and judged harsher in creating their art pieces than as compared to their white counterparts or their non-black counterparts. Is the idea that in their art studios or in the art classes, they are expected to create these exceptional pieces using, you know, exceptional skills and mediums and whatnot. They have to be that one exception, whereas every other person who is not black in those very spaces are not required to do the same. So I say all this to say that there is space for every single artist, regardless of race, class, sexuality, gender, whatever, there is space for everybody to exist within the art community. And every single artist and their skills and their mediums are valid to exist within these spaces in our society as well. These are a few of my thoughts regarding this discourse. And of course, like always, please let me know your thoughts below on this discourse whether you agree or disagree with me or if you have new nuances to add to this discourse because i definitely think that this conversation is worth having not only as it relates to art or the art community but also in our society during these times Thank you all so much for stopping by for today's video. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for stopping by. Bye friends.